Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode 647. Just for men, prostate cancer can be diagnosed without blind biopsies. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, medical director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin. My practice is BioBalance Health. And today we're going to talk to the men. We've been talking to women about menopause. And this today is um, my man lecture. Um, I take care of men and, and offer men who have low testosterone levels and who are feeling the symptoms of aging I offer them replacement testosterone with the safest and best form of testosterone, testosterone bioidentical pellets. Um, I do this because I want to provide the highest level of service, but also the safest service and the most effective. And that's hard to always find together in, in one treatment in medicine. However, what that means for me is that I need to make sure that I am aware of any problem that could occur from my treatment. And I want to make sure that I don't put people at risk for a cancer or a disease by using something that is supposed to make them healthier and turn the clock back and make them have a more uh, vibrant kind of life. So in doing so for men, uh, one of the biggest issues is uh, the fable or the the lie that says that testosterone causes prostate cancer. Testosterone doesn't cause prostate cancer. In general, it is low testosterone that initiates a cancer forming, and the combination of low testosterone plus a poor immune system, a system, an immune system that isn't killing cancer cells. So those two things together are really a bad kind of environment that set uh, patients up for uh, cancer any kind of cancer, but in this case, prostate cancer. The other issues are obesity and uh, high blood sugars and diabetes and lack of blood flow. All of those things put men at risk for prostate cancer. So if you are over 50 and you haven't had a PSA yet, you know, they're kind of getting away from PSAs. It's a, um, it's a blood test to see if your prostate is making this substance that goes up as you, as you age, but it also goes up farther than normal for your age if you have abnormal cells in your prostate. Now, there are some men who have a high PSA and have, they're moderately high, they're not really high, but slightly abnormal PSAs that don't have prostate cancer. And there are some men that don't have a really high PSA that do have prostate cancer. So in any case, it's not 100%, it is a screening test. And that's what, all it was ever meant to be. So it was something a doctor could get a blood draw when you're, he's getting your CBC or she's getting your, uh, your blood sugar and your hemoglobin A1C and then find out if you're at risk for prostate cancer. Now I do this with every one of my patients who are male, who, need, who want to come in and get testosterone. And I, and I continue to follow their PSA to make sure that I am doing no harm, which is what every doctor should be um, aspiring to. Do no harm and do the best you can for your patient. Make them better than they were when you wa they walked in your office. Uh, make them more knowledgeable about their health and motivate them to actually be healthier. So when I do the PSA tests on new patients, often if it is elevated, I won't see them for testosterone until they actually see their urologist and are evaluated. Um, here's what used to happen when I did that. And I do that, even if I've been treating them, I'll send them to a urologist 
because they're the specialists in prostate cancer. They treat prostate cancer uh, along with uh, radiotherapists, um, and they also diagnose prostate cancer. So what used to happen is I would send a man to one of my favorite urologists and that he would discuss a procedure with the patient. The patient would then have a procedure that was, I almost consider it barbaric. And the procedure is they use a, um, a biopsy instrument that goes through the man's rectum and into the prostate and they clip little pieces of the prostate out. And they, they just randomly, without having any visualization of the prostate, where they're biopsying, they just start taking pieces out. Sometimes 12 biopsies are sent. And those are called blind biopsies. When you can't see what you're biopsying in any part of a patient's body, that's a blind biopsy. I don't, there's no radi radiology. Uh, X, there's no x-ray, there's no ultrasound, there's no nothing showing where to biopsy. However, the fact is, is that an ultrasound and an MRI can both see abnormal areas in a prostate. So, I always wondered why they put men through this. They didn't numb them, they didn't, I mean it was, that's why it's barbaric, it's painful, it's not it's, it's not 21st century medicine. So in thinking about this and wondering, I'm not a urologist, so for goodness sakes, I can't like go, why aren't you doing something different that makes it more comfortable for my patients? Or put them to sleep, or look at them and biopsy them. And finally, in the last several years, I found that there are urologists who specialize in doing an MRI of patients who have a persistent high PSA and that they are worried about. So they, they do the MRI and they look for areas in the prostate that are abnormal. Then they use a, um, something that they borrowed from the infertility doctors. Infertility doctors use a, uh, what they call a vaginal probe that has a little um, biopsy instrument or a retriever instrument on it, and it's sharp, and it goes through the vagina to the ovary and takes eggs out. Well, that's a similar kind of procedure that they use now with uh, prostates, uh, prostate biopsies. You have to make sure your doctor is doing it this way. So basically, it is called, um, it is called, not a random biopsy, but a focal localized prostate biopsy and local focal uh, treatment. So they actually locate the area that's abnormal on a prostate with the MRI. They then set up a biopsy and the biopsy is done through the rectum. There is some numbing that it occurs that, or, the, or patients are sedated and they are, and the ultrasound can see the areas that were seen on the MRI. The MRI is kind of important because you have to make sure there's no enlarged lymph nodes or there's nothing else outside the prostate that could be a problem. So then they go from that, that to biopsy somebody who has um, no other um, signs of cancer, but they want to know if there's cancer inside the prostate. And the prostate is kind of a, a little round, uh, looks like a, a muscle kind of uh, tissue, but it produces the seminal fluid. It, produ it, it actually is a passageway for the sperm that come from the testicles through the vas deferens, and the prostate supplies the fluid that activates the sperm before it is ejaculated. So the prostate is very important, and all men need one, but they don't need it to uh, become abnormal. So when a doctor will actually do the MRI, find the area, and actually biopsy the areas that look abnormal, which means fewer biopsies, biopsies in areas that they know are at risk, but not just all over your prostate, it's a much less um, terrible procedure. P people will go back and get another biopsy in this way where they would never go back 
and get biopsies. I mean, most men would not go back and get a biopsy that was just random because it was painful and it was, it just seemed kind of barbaric. So in, in the Journal of uh, Urology in July of 2023, there was finally a big article about this. So I found out about, about this method through a patient whose husband, whose husband had, had been going through this procedure. And then um, I sent a few people to the same doctor and then I heard back about how this doctor was doing it in this, way, in this very advanced and more um, 21st century way. And then I found an article in Journal of uh, Virology that was called Focal Therapy for Localized Prostate Cancer in Older Men. So many of the centers not only do these biopsies in this, in this way, but they also use cryosurgery, which is freezing, and um, they, they also can use different types of ablation, like laser ablation, of the areas that look abnormal. And then they follow it up by watching the MRI and making sure that the MRI and the ultrasounds are clear. So this is a lot more like what we do with women. Um, in general, long time ago, back in the, when I first trained in um, cervical biopsies that we do, cervix is at the top of the vagina, and it's an area that can get can become cancerous. We used to just look at it with the naked eye and just biopsy areas all over it and send that to pathology and hope we got the right area. Then we started washing the cervix with vinegar, and that showed up white areas that were at, more at risk. And then we started using colposcopes where we could look at it with a microscope that was designed to be looking at something that was about that far away. Because if you're sitting bet between a patient's legs and you're looking at their vagina, you have, there's some distance. So it would focus on the cervix and we would actually be able to biopsy areas that looked abnormal to us. So now, finally, urology is catching up. So... Uh, what they found with this uh, diagnosis and treatment is that patients could have their early prostate cancer ablated, frozen, um, without much pain, but also they were much better at recovery. They didn't have all of the sexual problems that many men have with a uh, radical prostatectomy or with radiation of the whole pelvis. There are a lot of abnormalities that can, that can occur because of that. So um, we don't want to ruin someone's ability to have sex if possible. Now in advanced stages, your life or your sex life is the question. And so you have to, you have to choose your life. And then, you have, and then there are ways to get implants or something that will help you continue your sex life. So that's, that's an extreme. But most men, when they see their urologist for the first time, it's usually not cancer. It may be precancer. It may be er an early abnormality that's not even a precancer, but they want to watch it. So this method of biopsy really makes sense because somebody may have to come back and get another biopsy. And what happens is men get really scared about the first procedure, the old procedure, because it's, it's so painful that they don't go back, even if they've got a reason to get another biopsy, they won't, they don't want to do it. So it's very hard for the doctor to convince them that this is necessary because of the pain factor. Um, there was a study done, this whole paper is about a study done in the UK, and they used focal ablative therapy, the freezing or the, or the laser, and uh, they had a better five-year survival rate than they did with prostatectomy. Now, you have to understand statistics. You're not going to take somebody with an advanced cancer and just take parts of it out. If there's cancer everywhere in the prostate, then the prostate has to be removed, and any, bi and any lymph nodes around it have to be removed to see if it has gotten outside of the prostate and whether a full body... Uh, chemo or, or treatment, radiation of the pelvis has to be done. So there's a selection bias. That's what they call this. The selection bias is the worst, the worst patients with the worst prostates end up getting the radical procedures, but the people who don't have 
that advanced disease, disease like if you, if you jump on it right away and you get your biopsy in, and you also get a picture of it, they can then follow it. And if it grows, then you can have the, the localized, directed um, ablation of it. That makes so much more sense than damaging the nerves around the um, prostate, which control erection and ejaculation. So it's, this is a much better procedure. It's some that every man, something that every man should know about and should ask his urologist for so that you don't end up being miserable and having a bunch of biopsies and they, don't even, they haven't even looked at your prostate. They felt it maybe, but they've looked at a PSA and, and done an exam, but they haven't looked at your prostate. It should be looked at. Uh, it should be evaluated, and only the areas of high risk should be should actually be uh, biopsied. So, if that's what you are looking for, that's what you should ask for when you see a urologist. If you're worried about the biopsy procedure, if I mean it's probably not going to be offered everywhere. If you don't have an MRI in your town or or it's far away from where you live, then that's going to be an issue. And if you don't have a specialized ultrasound for this localized biopsy and treatment, that's an issue too. So you're going to have to look at, for right now, at tertiary centers. Um, tertiary centers meaning um, medical centers that are teaching hospitals in big cities for this kind of a treatment. I found um, the doctor that uh, is doing this currently through, a patient, through the patient, and he's doing it through WashU Medical Center. So that's in St. Louis. So I I know it's done. I know that it's, it is well received by the patients. And um, I think it's, it's a better way for the doctors to, to do a true biopsy of, of what's wrong. I mean, if, if it were a biopsy of the breast and we did it like that, we would just be taking pieces of everybody's breast out without looking at it with the ultrasound or a mammogram. So that's how, how much the pro old prostate procedure does not make sense because you could miss it. You could literally biopsy right next to it and miss the cancer. Makes no sense. But if you can see the areas, you can actually get the cancer and find it and treat it. So not only is it more comfortable, it, this kind of a uh, workup and diagnosis is actually more comfortable, more effective, more um, specific as to what is really going on there in, a, in an organ that you can't really see. Uh, and it is something that I think every man should be able to ask for because this is, and every urologist should learn to do it. Thank you for listening today. I hope this helped you with any of the decisions you have to make if you've been told your PSA is high. And a PSA is not, does not mean necessarily that you have cancer, but if it's very high, likelihood is yes. So you should get treated as soon as possible. So don't just drag your heels because you're worried about the procedure. Just find the right doctor and, and get the right localized procedure, and then you will know where you stand, and then you can make a good educated decision. Thanks for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.